UIS is the most common payload for consumer-grade consumer UIS. It can operate in photo or video mode. We are more interested in photo mode. Why is that? Video mode is a fun feature for drone. A lot of people are buying uh, drones to take video of their travels, of, their, of uh, just fly over their property and take a cool video. But we want to process the data. Video usually has lower, um, either uh, lower resolution or if you invest in high resolution, it takes a lot of space. We need frames from video anyway. So the UIS that we're working with are, um, are designed to capture uh, the high quality imagery. And we we're gonna be working in the photo mode, not in the video mode. Uh, what is the improvement uh, lately thanks to the algorithm, algorithms that are based on, uh, that are developed by the computer vision community is the use of the consumer grade non-photogrammetric cameras and create a photogrammetric outputs. Photogrammetry means that it is uh, possible to make measurements on the results of the processing. Before, uh, if you're familiar with the photogrammetry, the aerial imagery was used to produce ma uh, maps uh, before for a couple decades. Uh, but in order to take uh, to uh, make a map out of the photo, you need to have the camera report. You need the camera needed to, to be a special photogrammetry camera. It need to be calibrated. It is. It was an expensive. Uh, it was an investment, and it was not available for uh, uh, for. C it was not a consumer grade camera. And I, as you can imagine, a lot of cameras for the regular photography, uh, how many lenses, mounting systems, how many designs are there. You can use it all. You can, you can have all this, uh, you, it, all of it is available for mounting in the UAS. So you can have a frame lens, you can have a fish eye lens, uh, you can have different, uh, the all improvements that are developed for the regular photography, terrestrial photography can be also used um, uh, filters can be also used for the UAS. Uh, and then some of them are more, some of them are less suitable for 3D modeling. Here we have a picture of the one of the mounting, the camera with the, with the gimbal, with the mounting system above here that can take uh, oblique imagery. And you can have, you can see like, how does the RGB photo looks like? This is the one that we took at the Kitty Hawk Beach. Uh, it's just the regular photo, there is nothing more into that. Where, uh, when it comes to more information beyond the RGB bands, we come into the multispectral and hyperspectral cameras. And this is still a challenge because there is more sophisticated uh, mm, technology in included in that and the mini miniaturization is in challenging in terms of optics, but also in the, uh, sensor calibration. So there is, uh, there is still a need of the weight cost and data quality. It has improved, um, but the resolution and spectral bands uh, still need a lot of work. There are a lot of trade-offs. Like if you invest in more spectral resolution, you get more, uh, the weight is uh, bigger and the cost uh, rises. Mm. The cameras with near infrared red band are cheaper, lighter, and they are widely used for agriculture and vegetation mapping, for, for example, for NDVI uh, calculations. This is also considered a multi multispectral uh, camera, but it has just one additional band. Uh, the more bands, the, the more information uh, there is about the, the area, but also uh, the more uh, um, the more the sensor cost, the more sophisticated the more, uh, technology need to be used and the more uh, challenges are about the trade-offs of combining both of them into the uh, and mounting into the small UAS that can lift only so much. There are also active sensors. Uh, we're gonna focus on LiDAR and SAR that are used uh, right now in the UAS community. 
uh, what is so special about them. Active sensors not only receive information, capture information about the data, but also send, uh, send an impulse from them and then receive the information back. So this is something that can be done, uh, that can, more information can be acquired done with the simple, uh, with the opti just the optical sensors, like below canopy ground surface. The optics just see what there is. It cannot infri infiltrate through a visible surface of the earth. And then the active sensors like LID LIDAR and SAR can do that. Also, there are large trade-offs between performance and size uh, or cost of LiDAR. And uh, thanks to miniaturization right now, in the last years, there was, there was huge improvement and it's common to see the LiDAR mounted to the UAS. The SAR is used experimentally. There are still, uh, it still faces some challenges in adaptation, but there are some successful uh, uses of SAR uh, mounted at in the UA, uh, at, at the UAS. Thermal imaging is used mostly for monitoring, for the search and rescue missions, for forest fire monitoring, also for some um, structures in inspections, but for mapping purposes. Uh, it can be coupled with visible bound sensors. You can click here and see the example uh, of this solution. Uh, because the surface cannot be eas easily reconstructed from the thermal uh, thermal cameras, thermal imagery, but coupled with the visible band sensors, the thermal information can be wrapped over the surface and in this way it can create a thermal map. There is a crucial element, sensor at platform integration. You always need to remember that both of the things, what are the items, a vehicle itself and the payload need to be compatible. You need to take into consideration the volume, size and weight specifications of your vehicle and of the desired payload. Some of the vehicles can lift more, some not so much. There are different mounting systems. Some of the sensors just cannot be mounted but, uh, on the uh, UAV manufactured by a different company. There is also what needs to be taken into consideration is the specific application requirement. You invest in different payloads if you want to acquire different data. Sometimes it's not necessary to have the hyperspectral camera, maybe you just need a multispectral camera and invest in more resolution. You always need to have in mind what kind of data do you want to acquire before you invest in sensors or pick a sensor or even before you buy the vehicle itself. Sometimes it's more important to first research the sensor and then adjust uh, the, the UAV to the sensor. Uh, there are some custom solutions. You can see here in the picture, there is a professor from my university, Josh Gray, that builds his own uh, vehicle, mm, UAS, just in the garage and was experimenting with uh, payloads uh, how to mount them, he did it by himself. And you can also play with that. You can buy separately and design your mounting system. Uh, n not necessarily rely only by manufacturer solutions. There are also problems with that because you never know how, what is the quality of the data that's gonna end up because you're the first user of the whole system that you've just built. The most important thing that the sensors might be adapted to the career and the career needs to be adapted to the sensor.